Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions. We welcome you, and we thank you for the many questions you have sent us concerning life and its complex issues. As we always do on this program, we have invited a group of local ministers to review and research your questions and come up with insightful answers from the Bible. And they are with us now with their findings, and I'd like to introduce you to them. First, we have Pastor Ted Bible of St. Mark's uh, United Methodist Church in Lima, Ohio. Pastor Jeremy Thompson of Paulding Church of the Nazarene. Next, Pastor Russ Thomas of The Gathering Place and the New Creation Lutheran in Elida. Rounding off our panel is Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Line Church in Herod. We're happy to have you. Happy to have you all with us. Well, to dive into the questions that our viewers have been sending us, this one viewer writes, I have friends who, ha who are twins and both grew up in a Christian home. One twin has a strong faith and the other one has rejected it. I don't understand how the two could be so different since they have similar upbringings. We could even broaden that to just not twins, but two kids growing up in the same house, period. Isn't that? What do you, what do you think? What makes for that? Um... I guess I'd have to consult back to the Word of God. Uh, this is one place where science has finally agreed with the scriptures. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says to train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. So we all know that through our science class and health classes that the, the frontal lobes of the brain are the last things to develop in anyone, and those are the parts that control reason and understanding. So. When the Bible says, raise up a child in the way they should go, that could be any way. It could be negative, positive upbringing. They're going to follow what you've led them yeah. to. So if you've raised your child up in the truth, how do you test the truth? You have to live a lie to test the truth. So the Bible says that when they are old, they won't depart from it. That's why we never stop praying for our children. Right. I see a lot of folks in addiction in their 20s, and then in their 30s they find healing and mm -hmm. most times that I see healing in addiction it's because the love of a family that never gave up on them they stopped enabling them but they never gave up on yeah. them but here's where science finally agrees with God <laughs> I love it Excellent. so take that science <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay go ahead Pastor. yeah I think uh, it, it's also about you know who children associate with mm. I mean um, you know friends have have influence you know, the, the people they run around with have influence. You know, where they go to work at has influence. Um, and, and so those influences, sometimes those voices are much louder than the voices they've heard in the past uh, or much louder than other, you know, spiritual voices that they're hearing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as parents, as family members, we just don't give up on them. We continue to pray and we pray that the other voices, you know, the, the voices of God, the voices of, uh, of godly people, will come in back into their lives and, and overcome those other voices that are directing them into mm. a different direction. Mm. You know, the verse you mentioned about train up a child when it, the way he should go, when he's old, he will not depart. I did some research on that very verse this past week because it's going to be in one of my sermons that I'm, teaching, that I'm uh, preaching tomorrow here. Um, and it says, train up the child in the natural bent of the child which means you, you look to see where the child's giftings are and expose the child to those areas yeah. too. And uh, for instance, I have a niece, since she was four years old, she's always known she wanted to be a doctor. She would rather watch doctors perform surgeries on PBS than look at cartoons. Wow. Huh. And so her parents have done this all these years, given her that exposure. And now she's going to school to be a doctor. Wow. And that, that's something. Amazing. But that, it, Talk a little further about this. I think that um, everybody is different. And, you know, I have two children and they couldn't, they, there's similarities, but man, they are very different as well. And, and I think in the Bible you see this, right? Like Cain and Abel, different, you know, same parents, different paths. Uh, Jacob and Esau were twins, um, yeah. same parents, <laughs> different <laughs> paths. Um, and so I think that, that everybody, like in our denomination, tribe, whatever, we really believe a lot and everybody has free will and choice and, and everybody has to make decisions. And, and I think sometimes, and unfortunately, children sometimes or people tend to, to 
to go away from the church because they've seen church people act badly right. too. Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think it's really important that as we are raising our children to try to point out like when that person said that, whatever they call themselves, that was not in, in a way Jesus would, would have us respond to said situation. And so I think it's important that as we are talking to our children and helping them, understanding that at some point, you're gonna have to release them yes. and hope that you've taught enough of good reason, good understanding, good um, biblical understanding that they will make decisions, but ultimately it, they, they have a choice to, to make in the matter about how they're going to live and what they're gonna choose mm -hmm. to let identify them in, uh, in their life. And that's a scary thing. And yet I'm kind of thankful that um, we're not robots and, um, <laughs> right. and that we, you know, love always demands a choice. And so you have two people grow up in the same household, same parents, and go two totally different directions because mm -hmm. everybody is got to make their own decisions. Yeah. And you know what Pastor Russ was talking about earlier about listening more. I find that you know, as a parent of five, and they're all grown and gone now, but I should have listened even more mm -hmm. rather than reacting mm -hmm. so quickly. But when a when a person knows you're listening to them, they feel validated. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. And would you say that's one of the things we need to do more with yeah, our children? Um, we just need with our kids. I mean, we just one need to understand we're not perfect. Um, we made mistakes and to remembering those things and so therefore our kids are going to make stakes, mistakes too. And it's not so much of trying not to get them not to make mistakes, but how will they react from those mistakes? How will they correct the problem? How will they respond? Um, very similar to us, we, we have to be able to go back to our kids and say, hey, we're sorry, or hey, will you forgive me? Because we even as parents make mistakes against our kids. And so, um, so there's some of those kind of things because there's a lot of things where, you know, yes, they're twins, but they have different personalities, different love languages, different mm -hmm. giftings, different, yes. you know, yes, they might even be identical. It doesn't say that they're identical, but they might be, you know, you could put them side by side and not tell the difference. But when you get them talking, when you get their likes, their dislikes, mm -hmm. their personality is that becomes, becomes apparent, they are different. Yes. And if you put two people that are different, and ask them what they see in a picture, they will give you two different That's views. Right. Uh -huh. And so even though the same message might, and this is as pastors, right? This is the, we, we might say something, and here's what the Bible says, this is what the Lord says, and you get, you know, if you got 50 people sitting in front of you, you get 50 different opinions of what you just said. <laughs> right. And then it's a task to make sure that the correct message that God has given us um, is actually communicated to those people, and same with children. We need to make sure that the love that we express to our kids, the values that we you know, express to them, that they will get that and receive that and understand that. And you know, I have three kids and you know, they're not twins, not triplets, not whatever. Um, thank you, Lord, that isn't. Um, but they are all different. And it's, I was amazed uh, when I had my second child um, Your wife would be well, the deal. Well, yeah, my that. wife had our second <laughs> When we had our second child. But how early that they have a personality. You would think, like, well, yeah, when they hit two, maybe three, they'll have, they have this. Per no, like on day one, like they have their, this one cried, this one didn't. This, you know, all those different things and how they try to express themselves and communicate with you, even when they can't talk, <laughs> is different. And that showed me exactly I can't do the same thing. Even though I try because we are creatures of habit and mm -hmm. well this worked mm -hmm. this time it should work this time and it doesn't and why and and so we just need to be aware of that and um there is no promise uh, of you know of the same thing working for every person okay i mean you want to comment on that yeah no i i, I disagree with what everybody says i mean kids are just different you know and we think about where we were at as kids growing up i mean our parents had the same comments and we weren't twins, right? Our, we had brothers and sisters. We just acted different because of our influences. Our role models were different. And there's a lot of role models out there today that, right. that as I was a kid growing up, they weren't, they weren't as obvious, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so the influences, especially today, directed towards our children is so dramatic. And, um, well, and we I, just gotta continue. I like what he said. Yeah. I mean, church people, you don't know if their experience is at church 
was good. Right. You know, one could have been an, you know, an extrovert, the other one an introvert, yep. Yep. and they're in youth group, and one was sitting by themselves, and, the, and so they feel that church left them out. Like, there's so many different things that come into play, people, because, you know, if, if you're a people person, the thing that will ruin that is people. <laughs> so the, the, That's so true. That is so is. true. The family demographic, too. You know, I was the fifth of six children, and so I watched my older siblings wear my parents out and then not only were they exhausted but i watched and learned from them how not to get caught so uh, <laughs> as a as a younger child in the family i got into more mischief i think because i thought i could test my parents better yeah. because they were just exhausted yeah. out of six clever kids. you <laughs> <laughs> okay well uh, there's another question here that uh, this is an interesting from a viewer i have a friend who is muslim how can I best be a witness without sounding like I am forcing my religion on that person? This will work for not just Muslim, any other type of belief, or an atheist, whatever. Well, what do you think? Be a friend. Be Plain a friend. Plain and simple as that. You are a friend, and yes, your mission, all Christians have been called to expand the gospel. We have not been tasked to force the gospel. Uh, you will break down barriers and walls by allowing yourself to be that friend and having a God appointed times, not you appointed times, but God appointed <laughs> times that, you know, will, that God will use to break through that. And then when you do that, also just don't compromise on your convictions. Um, live, don't force your convictions on them, but be a friend and, and live as a Christian should live. I think the the best witness is when they're going through difficult times. Yeah. To show up mm. and not to force even in those moments, but to just be a presence when they're going through suffering and pain. And I think as Christians, that's when we shine the best. Mm -hmm. And and not, you know, it's like Job's friends, the first 7 days they were awesome and then they open their <laughs> mouth and who knows what happened? And, and so I think that just being present, especially when their mom's in the hospital or their child's going through a difficult time, that hey, I'm here for you to be with you. I think your presence will speak more volumes than any sermon potentially could speak to those people because their sermon, they expect you to say certain things. They don't expect you to show up when life gets difficult most often. And how much do we have in this, right? Do it. A friend loves at all times, but a brother is born for adversity, the word says. And mm -hmm. I like the way you stressed um, God appointed times. You know, I think it's in John 6, where it says that no one comes to the son unless called by the father. So mm -hmm. how many times are we, we trying to make converts when Jesus says to disciple the ones that we have converted? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to go out there and win souls to Christ. And the witness is the best way you can do that. You'll know they are Christians by their love oh, good. yeah very well put thank you very much well we've got to take a break we'll be back in a moment and we'll pick up some more of your viewer questions so you don't want to miss this stay with us don't go away there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of life questions but first do you have a question for a future show email it to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us 419-339-4444 you can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back now with more of your viewer questions uh, for our panel. Uh, let's look at this particular question from a viewer that asks, if I am interpreting the Bible correctly, <clears throat> Moses changed God's mind when God wanted to destroy the Israelites. Does this mean that we too have the ability to change God's mind? And I guess this is coming off of that time when, um, while Moses was up in Mount, on Mount Sinai, everybody went partying and developed the golden <laughs> calf. <laughs> and, um, and God well, God was angry about that, of course. And Moses said, if you're going to wipe them out, you're going to have to wipe me out too. Mm -hmm. And God changed, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Yeah, there, there's, there's a number of examples in, in the Bible that we could go through. Um, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but I think it was King Hezekiah, right, who, who was going to die. 
we only yeah, had God so many days left. More years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, so God, something happened there. And so I think sometimes, you know, in a way, I don't, I don't want to suggest that God's testing the people, but, he, but he's also, you know, wants to see how they'll respond to the situation. Again, we've talked about parenting earlier. You know, and so as, as parents, you know, we've trained our children up and if they come back and they challenge us and, and convince us to change our mind, that's and not a bad thing yeah, because will. maybe like, yeah, you, you got it. You know, we, we push you to this point or you're in this situation. This is what we think, but your response is good, you know? And so, yeah, we'll, we'll cut you some grace on that, right? And so there's lots of, there's lots of references to, in the Bible to, to God kind of changing his direction or, or his mind. Jump in, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I I think that we have to be careful because <laughs> this can be a very like um prosperity. Right. Yep. Um I prayed for Mercedes, God said no, but I changed his mind and I got it. Wow. And I don't think I that, that wow. well, I just think yeah. just prosperity in general. Yeah. And so I think um, some scriptures to really harp on, I think they're important because I think if you look at what Moses said to God, it was almost saying, but this is who you are, God. You're actually loving and compassionate and slow to anger and abounding right. in love. And so I think some passages that come to mind are um, Psalm 37, where it says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, it starts with delighting in the Lord. Right. Yes. And if I'm delighting in him, then I'm going to want the things that he wants. And therefore, God will give me the desires because I want his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs, um, submit yourself all your ways to God and he will you know, make your path straight. Well, it begins with me submitting to God. And then I'm going to do what he wants me to do, right? Like yeah, that's going to yeah. be my desires is his kingdom. And so, yeah, God's going to give me that because that's what. And so he I think, want you to have it. Exactly right. And so I think in this instance, it was Moses saying, but you're, you're gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, compassionate. Mm. This is what, who you have told us you are. And so I don't know that it was a changing of God's mind as much as saying, but this is what it means for you to be who you are. Ahead, so I, 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 I guess I see things on more of a simplistic level. I'm more of a visual guy, but um, Pastor Ted, you said about God not testing us and stuff. But Hebrews 13.2 says, uh, keep on, uh, well, 13, it starts with one, but 13.2 says, don't forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing right. it. So mm -hmm. there's a test that God right. does put us through. But I think about this on terms of every day um, because of Jesus, God has changed his mind because I've been condemned to death through sin and because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. So when I accept him willfully by faith, I just changed God's mind for my eternal damnation. So I, I, I see it on simple terms like that, I guess. So yeah. I think it's interesting that the question is poses around Moses. And if you're really, it, you're looking at Exodus 32 and 33 mm -hmm. in there. And Moses is an amazing character. He's, he's my uh, favorite character. And if you look at the language that Moses uses, because this is the prayer, the relationship that I want to have with God. And if you look at chapter 32, Moses uses the language of, remember, these are your people. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you haven't told me who you said you would bring with me. Like, remember, remember, and it's going back to the parent thing. Don't you hate it when your kids uh, tell you, well, remember what you said? Well, never mind what I said. I'm saying this now, you know. Um, no, but Mo God doesn't come back and do that. Right. God remembers what he says. Mm -hmm. And it's that boldness that Moses has that is fantastic that, um, because he, he's interacting with God. And, and in a way, from our perspective, he's challenging God. Yeah, but it's not necessarily a, a challenge. It's just a this is a genuine relationship that, yeah. and that yeah. I so want to have yeah, right. with the Lord, yeah. um, just like Moses did. And, and he is reminding the Lord and not just being feeble. Oh, Lord, do your will. And oh, I'm fine with whatever. No, he's like, God, no, you said this and I'm holding you yeah, to that. Yeah. And, and in, in Exodus 33, then verse 18, that allows Moses then 
to go before him and says, now show me your glory. Yeah. It's not a question mark. Yeah. It is a period. Yeah. And in some translations, it's an exclamation mark. And it's more of a demand. And yeah. so, yes, we can go before the Lord and demand things for the things he already wants to give us because we have followed his word to the yeah. T and we expect God to do what he said he would do. Yeah. Same thing when we lay hands on people and pray for them, we expect God to heal. Why? Because the word of God says, lay hands on as the elders come and lay hands on and you shall be healed. So we believe that God will do the very thing he said he would do. I, heal. I think God, I think Moses had good timing too. Absolutely. Because look at how God was so upset with what they had done. And what they had done was terrible. Right. And it was terrible. That they just partied on. And I like the part where Aaron says in response to Moses questioning what's going on here, well, we, we put in all the gold into this fire and out, out <laughs> popped this cow. <laughs> so you know, God could see right through that stuff. And then you get to the next chapter and, and, and God is saying, look, I, we're not going to go anywhere unless you go with us. Not, not, not an angel, but, right. you know, you go with us. We want your presence, Lord. And God changes his mind about that. And just as God is changing his mind, God slips, I mean, Moses slips one in. He says, God, show me your glory. What right. you just said a moment. And right. To me, that's the upshot of the whole thing. I mean, to be that close to God, yeah, to uh, to have that and type have of that relationship, open conversation. Yeah. it really is just conversation, just like yeah. this. He challenges, but he wasn't being disrespectful. Well, and if you go back to chapter three and four in Exodus, you see how like is this the same guy? Yeah, like this is the guy that was running and denied. He denied to do God's plan five times. Yeah. It's like yeah. Well, how does he go from here to standing before God with a boldness and being like, <laughs> wow, like I can be the mess up that I am. And in a short time, because that's yeah. a short time, mm -hmm. you're only looking at a matter of, you know, a month or something like that or, you know, and so in a short time, I can go from not wanting and denying God to being fully in his presence, having a genuine relationship with him where I can not necessarily demand, but I can expect God yeah, expect. and hold him to his word. word. Not, not begrudgingly, not angrily, not, not in defiance, not beca but because God is good and loving and he yeah. wants us to have those things. Yeah. That wasn't, wasn't God's ultimate goal for Moses to be in the promised land, but through Moses' disobedience right. yeah. with the staff, yeah. yes. he was denied access. He changed so God's mind God, negatively. He changed <laughs> oh, God's yeah. mind negatively, and so we, we that, do that every day. I guess people don't think about that part. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we think about it as this God was like going to just wipe them off right then. And that was the, the lie yeah. in the garden is, is like, you won't die. But in essence, God was saying, if that's the life they want to live, I'm going to let them go down yeah. that path. Okay. And so we look at it and think, well, man, God was just about to smite them right there. But I think it was more of if that's the God they want to worship, then let's I will let them right. destroy it wasn't themselves. Known, though, because right. there was a, a majority or not a majority, a large amount of them that did get killed that day. Yeah. You know, and the words that God said was, is I want to start with you mm -hmm. and Moses. And isn't that interesting? The love that Moses actually had for the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Like I would have been like, them. OK, God, do whatever you want. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm safe. You know, like those people. That's fine. They're a pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> you know? he, he was a type of Christ. He was. That's what, scholars, he that's what Bible people. scholars say, that the way he interceded was like a type of Christ. He loved his people. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, it's great. Look, look here's another question. Um, I have been talking to a friend about God, and he says uh, he needs proof to believe. Mm. And he says, I can't prove things in the Bible. Reminds me of Doubting Thomas. I've got to see it. I've got to see it. I've got to see it. How do, you, uh, how do you deal lovingly with a person like that? Oh, my. If you knew me before <laughs> I received the Holy Spirit and know me now, to me the, there's physical evidence of a living God in a transformed life. If we live our lives as the Holy Spirit guides us to lead, we're not who we were before. And if that's not enough physical evidence of you, I could not change within myself to who I am now. Mm -hmm. It would last two weeks maybe, but because of the sustaining power of the Holy Spirit, I'm not who I once was. There's your evidence of a living God. That's excellent. Right there. I would say, say if I was in this, and I, I've been different. When I was younger, I would have 
toss tons of things. Well, how about this? And, and creation alone testifies. The reality is this. Mm -hmm. your, your job is to share Christ. Mm -hmm. You need to prove nothing. That is on God. And so you ask the Lord to prove to him, and then you challenge the friend just sit there, there and look. Well, prove that he's not. Start mm -hmm. looking and seeing. It is not your job to prove that God is real. God reveals himself. We don't re reveal God. Scripture is clear. God reveals himself to those he wants to. Mm -hmm. You just ask God to do that then. You know, in Job chapter 12, I think it starts at verse 8, God tells Job, look to the earth, look to the sky, look to the fish, look to everything, and if you, you can't see my breath in those things mm -hmm. of life, mm -hmm. That you know, he challenges as us to look for physical evidence of him in everything that we see. Okay. All right, another question here: um, Do people who never hear about Jesus go to heaven when they die? It's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> I That's think God's topic. big enough to handle it, and it's it's. I, it's not my place to be the judge. And I just pray, I pray God lets, lets them in. Um, and so I just say, God, you do what's right. And I just have to trust that he will be who he says he is in the end. And that's the only hope that I got. And um, I think it's the only hope people have. But I know there's one scripture in the New Testament. I was reading it yesterday. I just can't recall where it was. But it, it talked about how that it may seem like the Lord is delaying his second coming but actually he's doing so to give sinners more time to repent because he doesn't want to lose anybody. When you go, you go, God loves people so much that he even had Jesus transcend time right. from the tomb. He said he, during those three days, he went back and spoke to those in prison from mm -hmm. the days That's of right. Noah. That's so, right. you know, we have grace, thank God. I would have been stoned to death by now pre-Christ. But we have grace, pre-Christ, they had the law, but pre-flood, there was no standard. So they all went to hell. Yeah. God loved people so much, he sent Jesus back in time to preach to those yes. from that day to give them a chance for salvation. So yeah, above my pay grade, I just know that God loves us that much. And I think the, the key to that question is the question of, or the word of about. Do they need to know the name of Jesus, mm. the name Jesus, or have they identified under another name, Yahshua, you know. A mustard um, seed. Right. I, so there's just a lot of questions that, yes, it's above our perigrade. We can have a lot of conversation, but. Yeah, I just, you want to chime in? Yeah, I just, We've got I about just, a minute. Yeah, I, I just think that um, you know, <clears throat> through no fault of their own, right, they did not have the opportunity to be introduced to Christ. There you go. And so I, I don't see how they can be punished for that kind of um, inability for somebody to reach reach them mm -hmm. and um, you know the greater concern is for those who we have shared the message with right mm -hmm. I mean those are the ones that are in our control mm -hmm. <laughs> those are the ones that are, are within our pay grade yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know those that we have an opportunity to interact with on a daily basis those that we need to introduce to Christ you know we'll let God figure out those who haven't but there's a lot there's plenty of there's plenty of work over here for us to right. do without us focusing too much on on those those are fun conversations, but in the end, it doesn't matter for yeah. what we have been called to do. You exactly. You know, and we need to make sure that that's important. Yeah. And with that, we're going to have to wrap it up. Thank you very much. This has been most enlightening. We've gotten through a lot of questions, and hopefully for those of you at home, wherever you happen to be, uh, this has been a blessing to you, and uh, I would suggest that you follow up and get into the Bible so that you can read up more on some of what has been presented here today. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. For the pastors here, God bless you. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? 
Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.